Okay. Good. We'll get you a minute. We'll get you a minute character. Now, I want. I really want you. I'm gonna ask you. I want you to hold that position for a second because I'm gonna. You're, everybody's gonna join you. Okay. As a team, let's all join her. I want that. Let's all sit like it's. We just did negative self-talk. And I love the cameras are here to see this because I want us to see this. Okay, now, one by one, eyes don't move, eyes up, look around each other. Look around each other. Can you see this? We're not going to say a word. I want you to all sit as if your self-talk is strong, powerful. You are strong. You are powerful. Now I want you to get in the position with just sitting that you're strong, you're powerful, you're confident. You've learned from stuff. What's the difference? That's huge. So that's a behavioral thing you can do. That's a behavioral way you can identify your self-talk. When you're on the court and somebody's body language is down like this, you know what's going on in their mind. When their bodies are open, it's different. What else? What do you notice right now with this room like this? are kind of facing and more you think being open but like open to everyone in the room like their interactions with others versus being like closed off and looking down at the ground or like looking at your feet so i can't talk about what i just did with this show but this show was in roughly it was about observing five-year-olds and f watching five-year-olds behaviors and we could see this we could see self-talk in five-year-olds without them being able to articulate it because we'd watch the body language, so behavioral observations. As a team, they, so there's something called fake it till you make it. I had a guy one time struggling with depression. He was so hunched over, I made him stand up. I made him have his head back. I didn't make him do anything else. That's it. Head back, shoulders up, and a week later, it significantly changed his life. 